I read this book and I couldn't believe that this man led this lifestyle and still survived. And, and, but didn't you, in fact, actually talk to him during the making of the film oh, or yeah. in some way? Quite, he, he... quite incessantly. Yeah. <laughs> quite incessantly. So tell us who he was. I mean, you, we know his story in the book, but you just said one interesting thing. He, he was truthful. Yes. To himself. That's what I think yes. I appreciated most of was that he, you know, to him the book I think was a cautionary tale of his time on Wall Street. And since, you know, since that time he's, he's a much different person and he's actually depicted as we depict him at the end of this movie of somebody that's going around talking about the dangers of greed and, right. and uh, trying to, you know, get into the business sector with, with you know, um, some sort of moral yeah, foundation. Kind of. Tony Robbins of his time. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, his he was incredibly candid and, and, and honest with me about what he went through. And a lot of times he would, we would talk about sections in the book and say, not only was it that bad, I was ten times worse. And I'm going to tell you why. And I, and I really appreciated that honesty yeah. because I think, you know, from Marty's perspective, he wanted to have a little bit of distance from that subject. Yeah. But I needed to speak to him uh, constantly just to get, you know, the nuances and the detail of... of, of of, of what these yeah. scenes were like. Yeah. You have said that uh, uh, that the speeches were some of the hardest stuff because that's where you saw the art of salesmanship. Yeah. You saw how much he believed almost, or did, yeah. what he was saying. And it was almost messianic and, you know, Well, the, you know, I had been thinking about the... I mean, Terry Winter wrote this incredible screenplay, really catered for Marty and myself, and I'd been thinking about these speeches for for almost six years and 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 uh, you know mechanically breaking them down but it wasn't really until I was on that stage where it kind of took on a life of its own I, I kind of felt closer to what Jordan must have felt during that time period where he almost created a cult for himself yeah. and 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 being consumed by that adoration and 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 the power of you know uh, being able to provide great amounts of wealth to th th this mass of people that were worshiping him, and, and when I got on that stage, it it kind of took on this incredible life of its own, and I, I kind of felt like I was Bono or some rock star, even though I knew, <laughs> even though I knew that these the, these you know actors were paid to clap every single it's, time it's, it's I was shouting at them. <laughs> you get this incessant need to you know you know push them forward and. It, yeah. it almost became like this, uh, you know, brave heart speech or, or, or cry for battle, except yeah. I was persuading them to go out there and, you know, essentially screw as many people over as possible.